This movement system will allow your character controller to crouch under obstacles, crawl beneath objects and through small spaces, and transition between the standing, crouching, and crawling states seamlessly. A basic first-person character controller will be needed for this tutorial. If you do not have one, please consider following a tutorial like this one, and then returning to this video. Here's the quick rundown of how this will work. We'll maintain a state system consisting of the standing, crouching, and crawling states. Derived from this system will be a number of animations to move the camera accordingly, and a function to switch between collision shapes for each state. Links to the project source code in the description. Alright, let's get right into the follow along section. Okay, so here we have a fairly empty scene. I have a player character controller, a couple obstacles, a directional light, fairly standard stuff. Uh, to start out with, we're going to go into our player scene. We're going to need to add some animations and collision shapes to make all of this, uh, these movement states work correctly. So let's um, add an animation player node. And we're going to create a new animation. We're going to call this one standing to crouch because it's a transition animation. I'm going to set the uh, duration to 0.2 seconds and we're going to add a property track. I have an orbit camera node. If you have a camera 3D, that's fine too. I'm going to select my orbit cam and then the position. And I'm going to add two keys. One of them will be at zero and the other one will be at 0 0.2. <clears throat> so um, standing is our default state, which is basically where the camera is now. Crouching, uh, we're going to have to move the camera down. So I'm going to set it as negative 0 0.3. And we can see how that looks. Okay, that looks fine. Uh, we're going to duplicate this animation, and the next one's going to be standing to crawl. Okay, so we're still standing, so 0, 0, 0 for the first value, and for the second value we want uh, negative 0 0.8. This is what I'm going to use. Um, so it's like we drop uh, right onto our belly into a crawling position. And one more, we're going to duplicate it again, and we're going to go with crouch to crawl. Okay, crouch to crawl. So crouching is our starting state, so we're going to go from negative 0.3, which we established, oop, is our crouching state, and go to negative 0.8, so we can see what this looks like. Okay, it looks good. And finally, we're going to add another animation. This is going to be our reset animation. It might come default, depending on what version of Godot you're using, but regardless, um, we're just going to do what we did before. And select orbit cam or camera 3D position, and you just have to set the first value and make that 0, 0, 0. That'll reset our animation or our camera to the correct spot when we start the game. So we can save this. Next up, the collision shape. So we have our default collision shape. I'm going to make this mesh instance invisible so we can see uh, our collision shapes more clearly. So this is what I would say is like the, the standing collision shape. Um, let's play this, yeah. Um, so we're going to call this the standing collision shape. Okay, lovely. We're going to need two more, so let's add those. Two more collision shapes. I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate that one. And we're going to rename this one to crouching collision shape. And we're going to rename this one to crawling collision shape. All right, lovely. Um, we're going to give these both capsules as well. For the crouching shape, uh, I'm going to make the height 1.5 because it's a little bit smaller. And I'm going to actually drag this down. So what's important here is that you make them all kind of line up on the bottom. Otherwise, when you switch between them, you'll basically fall because your collision shape is what keeps you on the ground if you're using a character body or a kinematic body. Um, so that's fine. We're going to do something similar for the crawling shape. Uh, the radius I'm going to set to 0 0.4 and the height I'm going to set to uh, 1.5. Okay. Now I'm going to drag it down, hit Y to enable snapping, and then I'm actually going to rotate it 90 degrees. So we'll have a collision shape of someone who's like on their belly. Uh, and disable snapping, and we're going to line it up like I just talked about. Uh, yeah, we're getting there. Okay, that's close enough. Feel free to make it perfect. You know, if you want to be really precise, get the best experience. All right, it's not really dragging, so. Oh, there we go, okay, lovely. 
So that's good. Now we can move on to the uh, code section. So let's go ahead and do that. Just one moment. Okay, so for the code section, I'm going to be copying, pasting, and then explaining what I have. Um, if you feel like I'm going too fast, uh, or you want to follow along really, really closely, um, the all the codes in the description, feel free to copy and paste alongside if you want. Um, but let's start with the variables we'll need. So I have three speed variables. These are just going to change the speed while we're moving, depending on our current state. I have this true speed variable, which basically just allows us to easily switch between which actual speed we're gonna use in our move movement calculation. So um, the default is the walking speed because that's our default state. The standing is what we're gonna start as. And then I have two state variables, which are is crouching and is crawling. They'll just contain the data about what we're actually doing. We could have a third one, which would be is standing, but for our purposes, we're just going to assume that if we're not crouching or crawling, then we're standing. Okay, next up, um, we're going to create a function to switch between all of our uh, movement states. So I'm going to copy paste in this big function and explain it. So it's called movement state change, and it accepts a change uh, type of variable parameter. Um, this is just a string, which can be crouch, uncrouch, crawl, or uncrawl. So uh, crouching is when, um, and we're going to switch between these with a match statement. Um, if it receives the crouch um, command or parameter, then uh, we know that we want to end up in the crouch state. So if we're crawling, then we want to move from crawling to crouching. We have an animation that goes from crouching to crawling, and that's in the wrong direction. But we can make it correct by playing it backwards. So that's what we're going to do here. Otherwise, if we're not crawling, then we are standing. And we'll talk exactly about why that works a little bit later. Um, so we're going to play the standing to crouching. So we're always going to end up in crouching in this section. So we're going to update our state variables. We're crouching. And no matter what, we're not crawling at this point. So we're going to set that to false. Uncrouching is when we are crouched and we've just hit the crouch button and we want to move out of crouching so we can toggle it on and off, basically. Um, so yeah, we're going to play standing to crouch backwards because we're going to go from crouching to standing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then we're gonna update our state variables as usual, and then we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing um, for crawling and uncrawling. You just have to be careful um, which animations you play and make sure to play them in the right direction with play backwards if you need to. Don't worry about this commented outline. We'll get back to that soon. So at that point, we can actually test this, um, but we will need to get some input. So let's go into our input map and add a new action, crouch and crawl. For crouch, I'm going to select X as my key code and Z as my key code for crawl. You guys can put it to wherever you want. Um, but now we need to get our input. So um, you can do this in your process or physics process um, function. I would suggest putting it in your physics process because we will be modifying our speed uh, with move and slide. So that's where I recommend. If we press the crouch key, then if we are not crouching, then we want to begin crouching. And then we want to set our true speed equal to our crouching speed. Otherwise, if we are crouching, then we want to uncrouch. We want to come out of that crouch if we press the crouch button. So this will become clear in the demonstration. And then since we're in standing state, we want to set our true speed to our walking uh, or our standing speed. And the same exact thing for crawling. Um, and depending on how you've implemented your move and slide, you will have to change one thing if you want to update your speeds. Um, basically here we can just set all of these speeds to be our true speed, because that'll be correct, yeah. So let's update that. Okay, now we can hit play and test this. So when I hit the crouch key, when we're standing, this is the standing state, we go into crouch, hit it again, we uncrouch. 
So that makes sense. Let's hit Z. Now we're crawling. If I hit Z again, we are uncrawling. Um, so we go all the way from crawling to standing. And if we're in crawling like this, we can hit X to go into crouch. And then we can hit X again to go into standing. So you can switch between these states very seamlessly. That's what I like about this system. So let's close that out. Okay, so it's, it's working nicely. Um, the last thing that we need to do is... Um, Oh, okay. Quick, 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 quick thing. Go back to your collision shapes and make sure you disable the crouching and crawling shapes. That's going to be very important for our next section. Okay. One last function and then we're good to go. I'm just going to copy and paste it in and explain. So, um, this function is called change collision shape 2 and it accepts one parameter called shape, which is a string. We're going to use a a match statement to choose between the different possible values. Um, the possible values are crouching, standing, and crawling. So this function will, um, depending on the state, which is crouching, standing, or crawling, uh, disable or enable the correct collision shape. So this will allow us to actually navigate under those obstacles however we want to. It's a little bit confusing, so I have this comment here. Disabled equals false means it's enabled. So for example, for crouching, we are enabling the crouching shape and disabling every other shape. And the same goes for standing and crawling, depending on those states. So we have to go back up here, and I'm going to uncomment. You can add this um, in each of these sections, wherever it makes sense. Yeah, just keep in mind that when, you, um, when we have these uncrawl and uncrouch um, sections that we're going to the standing state. Otherwise, uh, it's just crouching and crawling for setting that up. Okay, let's uh, hit play. And I have some obstacles here. Let's see if I can navigate. Yep, yeah. see if I run into it face first, I can't get past it. Otherwise, I can get underneath with crouching there, and we can crawl, and we're underneath. Lovely. If you found the video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing.